I just wonder what you're seeing right now when you look at that statistic, what that tells you about the economy. Yeah, it's distorted in the last week or two by the, the floods in the Midwest, and we move a lot of coal. But, but uh, there are 20-odd categories that, that the uh, railroad industry reports on for all the railroads. Uh, and winter is always a little bit of a tricky thing, but I would say that it, uh, it looks like it's slowing down. I don't mean it's reversed in course or anything, but it does, it does seem from all of the businesses, but especially including railroad statistics because they come so fast uh, and they cover such a broad spectrum. And it gets distorted by whether people are hurrying up the Pacific trade because they're worried about tariffs and all, all of that sort of thing. But I would say that it, it does look like uh, the pace of increase in the economy has slowed down, and I, I wouldn't call it I'd call it somewhere close to noticeably, but I wouldn't go beyond that. Have you seen it broadly? Is that when it comes down to commodities, when it comes down to things that retailers are ordering, when it comes down to energy, or are there a couple of areas where you see more weakness? Well, it, it, there are these 20-odd categories, of autos and you know, the, the, uh, uh, aggregates, you, na you name it, uh, grain. Uh, it, most, almost all of those categories throughout last year were, were uh, trending strong. And, and I would say that uh, just looking at those figures, but also looking at some other figures, I, a good many other figures I see on a, on a weekly basis where uh, it, looks, it looks like things have slowed down. And you you'd always have the weather factor, but uh, uh, that's the way I'd bet looking at what I see today. I don't want to get too... That doesn't change anything we do. I mean, uh, you know, if, if there was a flashing red light, if there was a blurring red light, we would keep investing the same way we do. I mean, it, 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 just look at the railroad we, in, in terms of what the situation was in the fall of 2009. I mean, the, the, it looked like <coughs> the end of the world, and, 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 and it turned out that that was the low quarter, was the third quarter. Uh, you really want to bet on America. I mean, it, uh, it, uh, uh, you listen to that magnificent rendition uh, a few minutes ago, and... and uh, God has blessed America. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to get too wonky on this, but um, the yield curve, when you look at the 10-year versus the three-month, has inverted. And uh, again, this is a, a pretty important signal. It can signal a recession. It has signaled every recession that we've seen in the last 50 years. And it's only given a, a, an incorrect signal once. Uh, it's the first time it's inverted since 2007. Do you see a recession on the horizon? Well, though. I just hope I see a lot of recessions. I hope I live long enough. <laughs> there, there, I don't know how many recessions I've lived through, but I was, I was born on August 30th, 1930, and the Dow was a little over 250. And it was, by the time I got out of college, it had, there was only one or two days after my birth that it had been that high. So I, uh, no, I, I don't know whether I've lived through eight recessions or six recessions or you name it, but, but that, that, that's part of a that's part of a capital a capitalistic system, and 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 we will have them, and it won't change anything Berkshire either invests in in the way of, it may offer us more opportunities, but in marketable securities or business, if we see a good business, and everybody in the world is is, is bearish, that that inversion is going to 100 basis points or something like that, we're going to buy it, and and uh, and we'll buy it enthusiastically. The reason I, I kind of push on this though is you've talked an awful lot in the past about how. Um, high yields that you look at act as, as gravity on stock prices. Yeah. So if you're seeing really low yields, that inversely could mean that stocks should trade a lot higher. What, what do you think of this? Yeah, point? the lower interest rates are basically, the better the options stocks are, because stocks are going to produce whatever they are over the next 20 or 30 or 40 years. But if you buy a 30-year bond, you're going to get that rate or somebody you transfer it to. So when if a 30-year bond is at 2.8 or something or 2.9 a percent, and the Federal Reserve's intent now is to have 2% a year inflation, and you pay tax on the 2.8 or 2.9 that, that you receive, so your net is down around two. You're essentially saying, I'm willing to go with a profitless investment for 30 years. That's never really got my blood, <laughs> I don't get excited about that. And, and then when you can buy good businesses that may earn 14, 15% on tangible equity, and they've done it in aggregate for a long, long time, and you just think of the difference between good businesses and how they'll compound over time. You can start with yields that are higher than the bond gives you, and the, uh, the odds that those, with a diversified group, that that improves over time, it's, it's, it's a bond with ascending coupons, because that's really all a bond uh, the stock is. It's, it's a bond with a whole bunch of coupons that go out to infinity, and you, just, you have to 
print the amount on the coupons yourself. So you don't know the numbers. But the one thing you know is the numbers on, on stocks as a whole are going to be way greater than 2.8%.